Hello everyone, this is Santosh Kumar H. V. I am the course instructor for Machining Sciences and Tool Design. Today we will discuss module number 1, Metal Cutting Theory and Dynamometer. In that we will discuss topic Orthogonal and Oblique Cutting. First, let me introduce to the subject what is machining or metal cutting. So basically operations which is performed on the metal to remove the unwanted material so that we get the desired shape, size and surface finish in the workpiece which is useful for our application. As you can see in the slide there is a raw material on the left side and there is a finished product. The raw material is converted into finished product after machining operation and you can as you can see here the red dotted line is the excess material to be cut by machining process. Once you remove this excess material so what you get is a finished product which is in the desired shape and size. Why machining process? There are n number of manufacturing processes. Why particularly machining process is the question. And these are the advantages of machining processes. In other manufacturing processes like casting and forging, you cannot obtain closer dimensional accuracies Whereas in metal cutting, you can obtain closer dimensional accuracies and also surface finish. You can get better surface finish in case of machining compared to casting and forging. And if you go for super finishing processes, you can go, you can get RA value less than two also, less than one also. And it is quite economical if in case of small quantity you can perform the operations in the lathe machine any operations on the lathe machine and you get can get the job done and nearly 35 percent of the manufacturing processes is done by machine and these are advantages of machining processes however there are certain disadvantages in machining processes like the material loss is up to 50 percentage and you need a skilled operators to perform operation on machines, machine tool because any person cannot do operations on the machine tool. You should be a skilled otherwise you will damage the workpiece it will get rejected and it is not one step operation. If there is a series of operations to be performed for example there may be facing, turning, parting, thread cutting, chamfering, all these operations to be performed on the workpiece. So it is not a single stage, stage operation. There is a series of operations to be performed on workpiece. And more time it is required to perform these operations and difficult to machine all materials because you cannot machine all the materials. It should be having a machinability property to be machined. Now let us discuss orthogonal and oblique cutting. As you can see in the sketch, there is a cutting edge which is highlighted in the black line. This cutting edge is at 90 degree to the direction of motion of workpiece. Whereas in case of oblique cutting, the cutting edge is at an angle with respect to direction of motion of workpiece other than 90 degree. There is a plastic deformation zone ahead of the cutting edge and then there is a shear plane and then secondary deformation zone. The zone of plastic deformation lies between chip and, and the undeformed or one only elastically deformed work material. The size of plastically deforming zone varies according to the cutting conditions. And if you compare 
orthogonal to oblique cutting. All the analysis which we perform are on orthogonal cutting. Any analysis of the oblique cutting process also applies to orthogonal cutting. However, oblique cutting being more difficult to analyze, many authors have attempted to analyze only orthogonal cutting. But you can get forces by using dynamometer directly in case of oblique cutting. You need not do any analysis there. That's how you can get cutting forces in case of public cutting. Now let us see what are the differences. There are many differences between oblique and orthogonal. We'll discuss one by one. As we already discussed, the cutting edge is normal to the workpiece in case of orthogonal and the cutting edge is inclined to workpiece at an angle other than 90 in case of oblique. The chip flows perpendicular to the cutting edge because the cutting edge is normal to the workpiece. The chip flows on the tool face. The small length of the cutting edge is in contact with the work in case of cutting edge. The greater length of the cutting edge is in contact with the work in case of oblique cutting. And the tool life is less because only cutting edge is in contact with the workpiece. And the tool life is more in case of oblique cutting because the cutting force act on a large area when compared to orthogonal cutting. So we will end this session here. Thank you.